Uh, I just want to tie into the, your offshore experience over in Bilbao. I was reading the uh, latest PES Wind magazine, which you can get at PESWind.com if you haven't taken a look at it yet. Uh, and since I have Joel back on the podcast this week, I wanted to ask him about this uh, RTSIS uh, offshore wildlife protection system. So it's an acoustic monitoring system that floats out in the water, and the they have hydrophones and sensors that can detect sea life. Uh, and But they've now added, and it's just a smart move on their part, added an AI feature uh, where they can detect the sea life more ac- at a high accuracy rate. The AI algorithm is called Biosound, and it's sort of built into their, uh, their buoy or buoy, as Rosemary would call it, it's called Ruby, R-U-B-H-Y. <laughs> so the AI part is called Ruby H. It's called Ruby AI, R-U-B-H-Y AI. All right. Uh, but the detection rate is phenomenal. And they're saying for uh, for mammal vocalizations, uh, they're getting over 90% detection and less than 1% of a false alarm. And then for clicks, which I assume is like dolphins, right? Uh, you're getting 95% detection with less than 1% false alarm. That is remarkably high. What is AI adding to this to make these detection numbers so high? Well, I think there's, you have to think about the environment they're operating in as well. So there's physics is in their favor here. When you try to sub, subtend um, waves, right? When you speak, it's just a sound wave, blah, 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 blah through the air, a lot of things can mess with that sound wave in the air because there's not that much mass that it's touching. If you, if you send a wave through water, it tends to have high fidelity, right? So there's a, there's a physics component to why they're able to uh, detect very well. So they know what they're supposed to be listening for, but when those sounds are actually emitted in the wild, they have a, um, I say fidelity is the word I'm trying to say, but they st- the, that, that sound wave forms it, is delivered better. Um, you can hear, if you go to certain water columns, you can hear whales for kilometers away, miles away um, in the water because of the, because of the actual frequency at which they emit sound. And that water particles, unlike air particles, are right next to each other, right? So they, they, the wave travels better through water than it does through air. So they have that working for them, right? Um, something else to, to say here too, and you, when you ever say hydrophone, people always think it's like, oh, what is this thing? It's a microphone that goes in the water. It's, there's nothing fancy about that, right? But it just picks up vibrations. So traditionally, like in, in you know back in the day, you you drop a hydrophone over the water or into the water, and then you would just have it transmit in a speaker on the top side, and you just listen to it. Uh, and if you were, uh, you know, a marine mammal observer or whatever, you may listen and listen, listen, and you didn't hear anything. Okay. You reel it back up and move on. But now you have the ability to constantly monitor, uh, pick up multiple species. Uh, you can actually map activity through these things. If you have multiple out in an area, you can pinpoint activity based on, uh, the directions it's coming from. If you have a hydrophone array out, uh, so you can pinpoint di- distance and locations and all kinds of things from this. It's really cool technology. Actually, um, uh, the, the the basis of some of this stuff is from the United States military uh, doing acoustic monitoring for submarines during the Cold War. So I had assumed that the U.S. Navy is using some sort of AI now to detect submarines, and this is just a, a connection? It's just downstream is to detect uh, seals and whales? I would be willing to bet that when they put this thing in the water, they had to get clearance from the United States, from the Department of Defense to put this thing out there because there's a whole, a, a, yeah, along the continental shelf of like the eastern part of the United States all the way up to Greenland, there is a system of acoustics underwater on the seafloor to monitor for anything. Um, and this, when you start getting, playing acoustic signals back and forth, you can start to mess data up. Um, so it's bouncing around. So I'm, I'm for sure they would have to get some kind of clearance to put this thing out there. So the false alarms that they are detecting, which is less than 1%, maybe a submarine. Could be. Wow. Okay. That's amazing. The AI technology, you see it everywhere now. Everything has AI being applied to it, but this actually makes sense to me. It's one of the few times where I thought, oh yeah, it would make sense to, to put it AI trying to detect species because that's a really difficult thing to do. 
And you really don't want a human doing that because they're going to make a lot of errors. So here you go. Yeah, a human can only listen for so long before they get bored. <laughs> and then they like, did I hear that or not? I'm not sure. Except to this podcast where everybody's very excited to keep listening. Well, if you want more excitement, you need to check out the latest edition of PES Win magazine. Just go to PESWin.com. Hey, Uptime listeners. We know how difficult it is to keep track of the wind industry. That's why we read PES Wind magazine. PES Wind doesn't summarize the news. It digs into the tough issues. And PES Wind is written by the experts, so you can get the in-depth info you need. Check out the wind industry's leading trade publication, PES Wind at PESWind.com. 